Hey guys, guys, welcome back. Today we have an exciting video. Yes, we're still not opening any packs. I'm sorry, okay? We don't have any more chilling rain. We're waiting for stuff to get here. Uh, Marnie boxes are coming soon. Lots of new stuff coming soon. No playing with rubber bands on my show. I'm just kidding. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so today we're doing our Pokemon top fives. We're gonna go over our top five favorite things in our collection. And to make things a little bit more difficult, a little bit more diverse, I have limited the options that we have. We can only choose one card to bring into our top five. So we will have Nikki's top five, my top five, and then a collaborative, uh, our top five things that we agreed on were part of our our favorites in the entire collection together. And, and mind you, it, it's very hard for me to choose just five. I grow attached to all of my things. I think it's. I think it would be hard for anybody that has any, you know, size of collection to pick five things that they like most. Because once you start acquiring things or getting things as gifts, you start feeling like a dick if you don't pick it as your top five, especially <laughs> if it was a present. Like, oh yeah, here's my top five, but to heck with all those gifts that people got me. Like... The board back there that I have with all of the sign cards and everything, I seriously considered uh, putting in as one of my favorites. But I think that kind of goes without saying. When people send me sign cards with trades or purchases or gifts or whatever, that's always going to be something that I hold as one of my or favorites. Or the, the sign that you put everything on in general. That was a gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a gift for my wifey. All right, so we've got quite a few large things, quite a few small things, but I think we should start with our collaborative top five. And we'll start with the uh, the items that require us to, you know, hoist them up in front of ourselves. <laughs> hoist is so the operative word. So, grab that big old thing over there. So, we made a video specifically on this item when we got it. We purchased it back in 2019 as a pre-order, and we did not receive it until this year. But, this is a statue that we purchased from Faber GK. It is a, a Chinese company, I believe, and they contract out to different resin artists and everything to make these giant sculptures. They don't dictate what kind of sculptures are made or anything like that, um, but they offer them for sale so that the, you know, the people that make them don't have to have their own stores and stuff. But this bad boy is a whopping 23 pounds and it was $500. We waited so long for it, I almost forgot about it until I remembered how much money it cost. <laughs> but it is an absolute gem in the collection. It's just beautiful. It's very fragile, and my I'm very weak, so I'm not going to hold it for much longer. <laughs> but you guys can see, <laughs> it is an absolutely stunning piece. We're we're so happy to have it in the collection. They also made a, a clone cloned Mewtwo version of it, and favorgk.com. I think it's just their website. You can see all the different sculptures they have. They have tons, evolutions, Pikachu's, Gyarados, you know, all those other fun guys. But so that is this no particular order for the hours. And by the way, their their stuff. A lot of it's pre order, and it's sold out before you even actually have color sometimes it's sold out with just the concept photos out yeah so. it's pretty crazy but they always end up looking absolutely stunning so we're definitely very happy with our purchase obviously or it wouldn't have made it into this video all right so we're not like i said going in any particular order but oh, number number two well okay so five number four <laughs> this <laughs> standee of Charmander from the Mystery Dungeon. I won this on an eBay auction for my lovely wife. Because you guys know Charmeleon is your favorite Pokemon. Charmander, Charizard, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I won this guy for $37. And he was shipped from the UK, which was very exciting. I believe the shipping was more than he was. But what a great purchase. He's so cute. This is apparently a life-size Charmander. What a big boy. Could you imagine having a lizard this big that could spit fire <laughs> at you? It. I would love it. I think it would be kind of intimidating, but, you know, nothing really needs to be said. Just the the level of excitement that she had when I showed this to her for the first time was ridiculous. I, I had bought her a motorcycle before, and she was more excited about this. More outwardly excited. because I just look at him. He's got a little bandana. He's adorable. He's fantastic. And it's a piece that is very easy to display because you just plop it in a corner, and it just looks great. He's a cutie. We love him. All right. So, our number three on our list is another um, sculpture item, since we're doing the largest items first. This lovely beast is a Pokemon Center New York Skyline statue. Now, Mew is me, 700, the owner and uh, operator of the Pokemon... New Pokemon Center New York historic website uh, is the reason that I know what this is. And... 
uh, the reason that I have it. She actually has one of these herself and has posted photos on it, and she also posts a lot of information on kind of lesser known about Pokemon items and like lost Pokemon media, specifically involving the Pokemon Center in New York. It's also the newest to our collection. Yes, this is actually like the newest item that we have that is, you know, very exciting other than cards. Um, we purchased, purchased this on eBay, and it has been, I would say, my number one best misspelled item purchase. Yes. I have saved searches for misspelled Pokemon items, and this was spelled Pokemon. So it didn't ever have any bidders on the auction, so I was able to get it for the starting bid of $199. Uh, there is some issue with it. We've got a little broken Charizard tail, but we can get that fixed you know, pretty easily if we take it to somebody who works well with clay and whatnot. We just have to make sure that we get it to somebody that actually knows what they're doing. But we'll switch the camera over so you can see this guy from closer angles. Absolutely beautiful. We love him very much. Um, it's been kind of a struggle to find where to put him because Charizard is long boy and we have narrow shelves, but we will figure it out. Uh, something super interesting about these is most of them came broken. The Pokemon Center in New York was uh, opened back in 2003 and that's when these statues were made and because they're ceramic, they're glass, uh, I guess shipping wasn't the best back in the early 2000s because <laughs> most of them ended up with broken Pikachu tails, broken Charizard tails, I would assume broken Thanks. wing tips and stuff. Just anything that's very, very fragile. Now this is a very light statue compared to the other one that we have. Uh, it's not heavy, so it's easy for me to hold here for you guys. But absolutely a lovely statue. If you're ever interested in anything weird and unusual Pokemon, be sure to check out Me Was Me 700 on YouTube and on Instagram, as well as TikTok. She makes TikToks as well. She has some of the coolest items ever in her collection. We love her. But just give, give good ones over at this guy. Look at that tongue, Charizard, wow. A plus. And we have a chonky Pikachu as well. Very nice. Here. <laughs> so we, I decided that we should pick a card that was very special to us for a number of reasons. Early on, very special card. A card we both really loved. A card we actually didn't even know existed until we pulled it. Yep. Uh, amongst other things. So here we go. We have the Mew and Mewtwo Gold Tag Team from Tag All Stars. This was not released in English. And it is now worth nearly $250, oh, I think. Really? It's absolutely it's insane. New. It was like an $80 card when we pulled it, I believe. And we were both dumbstruck because we didn't look at the set list for Tag All-Stars before we opened it. Uh, we also didn't know there was an Ultra Rare in every pack, so we thought we got an error box. And it was, people had to explain it to us. But we were very excited when we pulled it, just because Nikki loves Mewtwo, I love Mew, and honestly, it's a super cool card. I'm kind of bummed we never got it in English, but I think that's what makes this one a little more special, because there was such a limited... Uh, a, a limited number of things you could pull it from. That being a booster box or I guess like single packs that you would buy online. But since it was exclusive to Japan, it makes it a little more special. The bend is only in the sleeve. Don't don't think the card is bent, please, here. We'll prove it. It's, there's no crazy. It's just the sleeve. It's wonky. <laughs> <laughs> the whole pack of penny sleeves was bent like that. Somehow. Alright. So that's that. That's our number two. And then our number one for our combined favorites, and once again, no particular order, is this lovely card file. Now, the Pokemon Center has always done these neat little like art gallery things featuring specific artists, and they'll do phone cards, files, uh, prints, and different things. And this is an artwork called a, a, The Surprise Encounter by Ken Sugimori. Now, I've been looking for this in the phone card for a little over a year and a half. And I finally found one on eBay, but it's going for over $2,500, which is just not a realistic price. I got this along with about 10 other card files for $62 on eBay last year. And honestly, this is a little bit better than the card file because we can hang it up and it's easier to see. You don't have to really squint to look at it. And it's just a beautiful piece. We've got a shiny Charizard and clearly a very unsuspecting trainer and a very frightened little Bulbasaur and Pichu. Look at Croconaw. He's not phased at all, nor is Noctowl. And Noctowl looks a little smaller than I was expecting, to be completely yeah, honest. Yeah, I thought he was pretty big. Mm-hmm. I think, the mm, Ken Sugimori, the one thing you messed up on was scale. Maybe it's, maybe he's a dwarf. Ken Sugimori doesn't mess anything up. But it's a beautiful they piece for sure. sizes. He could be an extra small, but very, very nice. This is, uh, just something that we will always treasure in our collection. And I haven't seen many more of them come up for sale, so I'm glad we were able to snag it when we did. So, I, you want to go... When you first showed that, didn't uh, people ask where you got it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, eBay! <laughs> mm -hmm. 
eBay. eBay for everything. You want to do one and one? I'll, you sure. do one, I do one? Okay. Sure. So let me put this card away real quick. And now I'm saving a specific item for my number one. I don't know if Nikki is, but do you want to start with the smaller I, items first? I don't have any particular order. I'm Because four of yours are pretty easy for me to show yeah. down here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Num number five for me. You guys have seen these numerous times already, okay. but... These are my, and I know we only we said only one card, but because it, they're in this thing that's literally screwed down, I didn't want to take the time to unscrew them. Uh, but the signed evolutions from uh, Mr. Masakazu Fukuda, the artist. Uh, these were some of the first gold stars we ever got, and they were probably some of the last we ever got as well because the prices started going up ridiculously after that. I think I won all of these for between fifty and seventy dollars on eBay right before we went to the Dallas Regionals yep. in 2020. Um, and we were lucky enough to get them signed by the artist, and it's an absolute treasure in the collection. Can't wait to have them graded. Uh, and so the autograph, well, just the autographs graded, because the cards are not in the best shape, let's be honest. They look a little rough, except for Jolteon, so it's not going to grade really high. <laughs> I mean, just look at that. It's like somebody chewed it. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, so yeah, that's my number five. And like I said, the only order for me is my number one, just for, it'll be for obvious reasons. So Nikki's going to match her number five with my number five, made her card. This Gold Star Charizard, if you've been a member of the channel for any time or follow me on Instagram, you've seen this card. This is something that we picked up on my birthday in 2019 for $40 at our local card shop. It is damaged. Uh, you can't really see the crease because it's very cleverly damaged, and it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but the guy didn't really know what he was doing when he... This is just goo on the back of the thing, so don't mind that. Uh, didn't really know what he was doing, and we think he typed in the wrong thing when he sold it to us. Oh, there you can see the crease. Even damaged, uh, it was at the it time, was still worth still like a hundred. Worth like a hundred dollars. Uh, unfortunately, even damaged, these are going for around five hundred dollars on eBay. That's a, according to most recent eBay sold listings. Um, but a card that we didn't think we would ever be able to have in the collection, and because Nikki is a Charizard, Charmeleon, Charmander fanatic, we just were ecstatic to have it and I'm sure that that is why it is in her you know her top five especially because it's a signature because that was a very special moment too. I would say that this was our first gold star but that was Reggie Rock. No I think Wasn't that was it? before it. This was before Reggie Rock? I think it was because we got that this only a month after we started ma making videos and stuff and yeah, we, so uh, we forgot to count him because yeah, we I said Reggie Rock was the first yeah we've always said that we yeah, we got that. What we call him, old boy. Old oh boy was selling his collection on eBay. Yeah, old boy lost a lot of money in lots. Yep, in mystery lots. We won the pack with the Reggie Rock for like seven dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. By the time mm -hmm. he finished out his stuff, he was the lots were going for over a hundred dollars. Oh yeah, so. because he had all the gold stars, all the shinings, you know, base set hollows. It was crazy. Shadowless. My number four. Nothing super rare or anything. This is a magazine that actually came out this year, and it is to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. But the cover artwork is what makes me want to put it in my top five. It's such a beautiful display piece. It's such a beautiful commemorative piece to celebrate, you know, 25 years of an amazing franchise. There's not much really more to say. I love it. I'm always going to love it. I, I feel, you know, lucky to have been, been able to be collecting during the 25th anniversary because we didn't get to do that during the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Um, so getting items like this during the time of the celebration really means a lot. So. Yeah, it has some of our favorites on the front, too. Yeah, so. look, we got an Umbreon, we got a little grassy boy, we got a little e-boy, we got that one. <laughs> that one. This is the spicy man. Don't forget that one. <laughs> Kicking chicken. All right, let's see your number four. Ha 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 ha. Number four for Nikki is the Hidden Fates Error Pack. Now this is something that I've only seen a couple of. Um, somebody that I used to uh, be close friends with on Instagram showed me these and was like, look at what this guy had, and he opened it. And his people on his stream were so pissed that he opened it. And I was like, I'm going to have to look me for some of them, because that's pretty neat. And we've always talked about how we thought yeah. Mewtwo should be blue. <laughs> um, but I should let you talk about why it's your favorite instead of just talking myself. You don't I, really like to talk, though. No, and you're a better talker. You know why I love them all. I don't want anybody to think I'm being rude. She really doesn't She's like not, to speak. I'm, I'm not it. Mm, I'm not a good explainer. I like to sit here and just look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, but I actually got this on Mercari for $33. The seller was like, I don't think the pack is supposed to look like this because none of the other ones we've had have. So they didn't actually know what they had, really. Right. And some of them sold on eBay for well over four and $500. Um, I've seen five others that are like this, including the one that the guy opened. So um, it's... Didn't someone, like, as soon as you bought it, were like, I'm going to give you this for it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, somebody offered me money for it, and I politely declined. But that's okay. We like it. We love it, and it's always going to be in the collection. All right, so Nikki's number four. Now, my number three is a little bit large. So we're going to have to switch over the cameras. <laughs> this one? No, I have it right here by my side. Oh, okay. All right, number three on my list is my Umbreon Bear Walker Skateboard. It took me a while to decide whether I was going to pick this one or... Um, the the Gengar skateboard, but I ultimately decided Umbreon because I do I feel like I have more of an Umbreon collection than a Gengar collection, and honestly I like the design of this board better. It's a little bit more intricate than the than the Gengar, but I still I still love the Gengar. Uh, the Umbreon is just you know she's just great. Look at her, she's fantastic. She's out there doing her best. For any of you who know where these are, where, where these are, please excuse me. What these are or where they come from, Bear Walker teamed up with the Pokemon Center uh, to make some skateboards, and there have now been three waves of skateboards, not including the uh, 25th anniversary celebration Pikachu skateboard, and uh, the first and second waves were kind of slept on, honestly, yeah. and I've gotten offers for over $5,000 for my Gengar skateboard because only 150 were made, and people are trying to complete the set, uh, and I have politely declined all of the, all of the offers. And I have even had some uh, a rapper, like a verified rapper on Instagram. I mean, he's not a verified rapper. He's a verified celebrity on Instagram who <laughs> happens to be a rapper. One of those checkmark people. Yeah, got a little check mark. Uh, but he offered me uh, a large sum of money, and he told me to just name my price. And I said, please stop messaging me, sir. I don't want to sell my Gengar. <laughs> um, and but I it, would be disappointed, too, because I love the skateboards, and I personally would like the set, complete set. Yes. That's the number three. Nikki's got her favorite of the skateboards, which is also a psychic type. Well, I guess Umbreon's not a psychic type. Umbreon's a dark type. Dark it's type. also a purple board. Just a lighter purple. We've got Mewtwo, of course. Mewtwo is one of Nikki's favorite Pokemon. And this is from the first wave, which is, like I said, one of the most slept-on waves of these boards that have come out. And probably one of the more sought-after boards from that first wave. I think Gengar, Charizard, and Mewtwo are the ones that sell for the most. I don't check to see what they're selling for, honestly, because I don't care because they're not for sale. I actually um, saw a Charizard board going for five grand the other day on uh, eBay. Yikes. That's a lot of money for something. To I don't know if it wall. actually got sold or not, but that's what they were trying to get for it. Probably. It will probably sell. But lovely board. We love Mewtwo. I think this is a fantastic design. Um, overall, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 would never, ever put my feet on this. It hangs next to the TV by her Mewtwo cabinet. But for the same reasons, it's the Umbreon's on mine. You that one's did on hers. get on your Gengar board, though. I did. I did a little shaky shaky on my Gengar board. So, my number two. I didn't take any of the stuff off of it, so it doesn't count as multiple because there's things on it. But this is my first ever display. And I get very attached to gifts when they're given to me by people. And this was given to me by a close friend of ours. Uh, Nathan Marie gave this to... Well, I, I'm including Marie. She she helped, I'm sure. Her love helps. Um, but Nate gave this to me a couple weeks ago, actually. Not too long ago. Because he just was picking stuff up from GameStop and was kind enough to be like, Hey, Kento likes Pokemon too. And now I have it. And it's mine forever. And I love it very much. Anything somebody gives me... <laughs> Because they were just like thinking of me, like not a not an occasion gift, like happy birthday, here's a Pokemon card. I just am like 27,000 times more excited about it because it's like, you gave me a present for no reason? I'm so touched. <laughs> Nikki's number two is the XY Premium Trainer Collection. I'll flip the camera so you can see it a little bit better. Most of you probably know what this is, but this came out in the late Sun and Moon era, and it features some alternate art cards that were never before seen in the XY era or in the XY sets. Comes with 12 full art Pokemon promos, including Aegislash, Jirachi, N, and more. 
And then some special other promos featuring Jirachi, because they're not technically full arts. But there's also some beautiful full art trainers in here. And Nikki basically had to beg me to buy this, because I was like, it's dumb. There's no packs in it, babe. And she was like, but I want it, please. This, this card, is what really made me want it. But she never wanted to open it. I mean, it's front and center, right there displayed, so we don't really need to ever open it. Um, but she does have seven other copies of this card, because for some reason it's dirt cheap. People don't like it, and I think it's dope. Uh, but we had seen it in, what, FYE or something for like $150 when we first started collecting? Barnes and Noble. Are you, I'm pretty sure it was FYE. I don't know. It was one of them, but I know I've seen <coughs> that in Barnes and Noble also. <coughs> and usually they're pretty expensive, but it was going for the same price as what was labeled at Barnes and Noble, I thought. Where did we end up buying this? Do we even remember? I have no clue. I feel, you bought I, it. I feel like with this tag, we got it at um, like a card shop or something. I don't Just with think that price tag. I don't know. A card shop or maybe like regionals. Maybe but regionals. I'm not entirely sure. Usually um, I, I leave it to you to remember where we got stuff. because I, I can't believe I don't remember where we got this. It was very early on in the collecting days though. So it's been a long three years. It's been hard for her not to open this. There's full art trainers There's full art trainers there. that she needs in here. All right. I want to save my number one for last. Okay. I know. Did I show my number two? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. So, Nikki's number one. Da, 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 da. <laughs> the collectible Charizard Special Edition Battle Set. This came out around the same time as, I believe, Pokemon the Movie 2000. And it has a special lenticular card that uh, we first found out about through Jordan Fringe when we delivered his Snap Station to him. He was like, I've never found the collection box that this goes with. I've never, like, I've never seen it. Don't know anything about it. It's super rare. You're, you're never going to find one. And as soon as Nikki heard that, a switch went off. And she was like, you want to bet? You, you want to bet that my wife won't find this for she me if I, <laughs> if I tell her I want it? So around 60 days later, we had one. And so did Jordan. Because <laughs> I yeah. sent him an eBay listing for it. Uh, eBay listing for the Mewtwo, though. And the Charizard. And the he Charizard. got both of them because of uh, eBay listings. There's also a Mewtwo, one of these. And I had purchased the Mewtwo off of Mercari for $72. And then the guy canceled my listing and relisted it on eBay for $500. Uh, and I know it's the same person because the username started, or the username was the same as it was on Mercari. And uh, the listing had started that day because I think it automatically goes to like a 30 day. Uh, I guess buy it now and then it'll just reset and it has started that day so obviously he figured out what he had was super rare and decided not to sell it for a low price but I sent the listing to Jordan and I was like I cannot justify spending this much on this right now so I'm just going to send it to you and hopefully it Boy, finds a good I one upset. she was very upset no amount of spaghetti could help mm -mm. but she does have the ee -er, ee -er card but that's, <laughs> that's this guy the lenticular motion guy uh, the box is in rough shape, but honestly, I don't even care, man. It's cool. We like it. It's cute. We also have the figures for these outside of the box uh, in her. Sitting in her. our collection case. The only one we don't have is the, the weird or all orange Charizard. I think it's supposed to be shiny, but shiny Charizard black, so I'm very confused about yeah. that. Yeah. Now, I've shown this piece numerous times. My favorite item in the collection. Maybe I should do it like this first. My favorite item in my collection is this. It is my Dragapult. This was a birthday gift from Nikki last year, and it is a custom glass bone Dragapult. Don't pay attention to the fact that his eyes are looking in two different directions, all right? It's hard to work with hot glass. People made fun of him on Instagram, and I was very upset. So this was made by a nice man in Baltimore, Maryland, who is a world-renowned glass, uh, glass worker. And it is made with all colored glass. There is no painting going on here. Um, so the, okay, I will switch it so you can see this part better. We, Nikki purposely had him not paint it. And the reason he is shiny Dragapult and not regular Dragapult is because red glass has a chemical in it uh, that makes it very hazardous to work with. Um, you can see where the glass like started to kind of separate from a different part during like the cooling process. In, Nikki had specifically said, please don't paint anything, just use all colored glass. And if he had painted it, he would have painted over, of course, any kind of like 
blemishes or areas where the colored glass doesn't show through as well. Um, but I've had people on the internet try to argue with me and say it's painted. I can assure you it's not been painted. Um, very much not. Focus on the most important thing here. Hello. There he is. Wow. Well, we got some little glass drapies. Now, for all of you guys out there that are just obsessed with pricing, how much was this? $1,400? 1600 1600 This was a $1,600 birthday gift that she drove 20 hours round trip to pick up. Both me um, and Michelle actually chipped in cute. to get this. He is the love of my life other than her and our child. But I love him so much. The fact that the guy could even make it look remotely like Dragapult with molten glass, which, mind you, molten glass is always all the same color, just blows my mind. But... The just the thoughtfulness and the care that went into the gift and everything and what all she did to get get the gift is what makes it my favorite. Not he also one. made the the stand, yeah. it was a custom stand to fit perfectly for his little tail to go into. Yeah, and he drag a pot head. It match him head. All right. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed our top five favorite items from our collection. These are of course not the top five most expensive, but the top five rarest. But those videos are to come. We, of course, know that everybody is always curious as to what is the most expensive item. Honestly, for me, he probably is the most expensive, but I can probably dig out some cards that are a little more valuable or, They you also know, might be looking for, like, uh, actual Pokemon items. Actual Pokemon items, not, not just... fan-made items. Yeah, fan-made. But we'll go through some other top fives of ours in other videos, but uh, I want to apologize for not having many pack opening videos lately. We just are trying to introduce some new content so Fringe. people aren't always expecting us to open packs when our luck has been so, so terrible, because I feel like that's boring. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. Make sure you let us know down in the comments below what your top five favorite Pokemon items from your collection are. We would love to know, and we will respond to as many comments as we can. But I hope you guys have a safe and wonderful start to your week, and we'll see you next time. My mouth hurts from talking so much.